Welcome back, everyone. We are here, the One Great Work Warriors, with another episode and another great topic. This is going to be a great discussion. It's going to go, who knows where this one's going to go, because as I was telling people before we went live, I've been all over the map thinking about this one, but I think it's such an important topic and a great topic. So welcome, everybody. We're so happy that you're here. And the topic that we're going to be getting into is mediocrity as the new standard. And I was the one who brought this uh before the group to talk about and uh, the reason I brought this up is because at the time I was talking to somebody who had children in school and it was really fascinating to me because I found out that if they participated in any of the sports or any of the activities they all got participation awards across the board didn't matter what they did they all got scored there was not really any scoring or anything it was just basically you show up and no matter what you did you got a participation award there was no you know gold or silver you know in the bronze kind of thing it was all everybody got the same award and it just got me thinking that you know back in my day you strived to, to excel in whatever you know if you wanted to win a trophy back in the day at least when i was in school that was a big deal if you were participating in any of these sports or activities and there was trophies you really wanted to win that you really they made you excel it made you strive and excel towards it because you wanted to win that and it just made you try so much harder and i just wondered it just got me thinking you know giving participation awards across the board is that maybe uh the start of the downfall for a better a lack of a better word of uh, to this mediocrity is being what everybody is used to accepting and what's going on so that's kind of where my head was at when i brought this topic up so i'm really excited to hear what all the warriors here have to say about this so i'm going to pass it to you brandon if you want to build off of what i said yeah thank you for that and uh unfortunately i have experienced this because i have been umpiring fast pitch girl softball for 18 years I've umpired all over the country and this is a, a a recent trend that I've seen in the past three to five years. And um, the way that the tournaments are kind of structured up is let's say you have about 16 teams, you know, uh, you may get like two pool play games, two or three pool play games, and then you'll play. You may have some teams that go undefeated, you know, like two and oh, you may have some teams that go have one and one. And then of course you wanna have some teams who don't win it at all. But when it comes down to like bracketing the teams, this is where it gets fucked up because they'll have a gold bracket and then uh, I just call it a shitty bracket, you know, because the gold bracket are for the teams, you know, who won, who are good, you know, who are skilled. Then you have a shitty bracket where it's the teams who uh, may not be as skilled. They might they may not be as competitive, which, you know, isn't a bad thing. But when it comes down to it, if you're in a shitty bracket, and you make it to that last game you still get rings or you still get trophies or you still get a, a t-shirt you actually get the same item that the first place team gets who may not have even lost a game and this has been in you know like in the back of my mind it's been on my conscience because i brought it up to the head umpire uh, and uh, i'm actually going to bring this up to the uh the two individuals who host the uh, tournaments and Personally, I don't think we should be rewarding these kids for uh, not being competitive, you know, for not wanting to get better because that's the uh, that's the mentality is is they are actually being rewarded for being terrible. And hell, let's be honest, a lot of those teams are just flat out terrible. I understand that their parents may not have the money, you know, to you know to get them lessons. But then too, a lot of the parents don't go, don't go out there and actually work, you know, hell with the the uh, child they don't go out there and try to uh coach they don't go out there to try to teach them and i played sports um a lot when i was younger i was very competitive and you only got rewarded if you came in first or second place and um the way i see these parents acting is quite frightening because i would be embarrassed as a parent if i had a child you know who was you know like getting rewarded for because it doesn't encourage them to get better. It doesn't encourage them to hone, you know, like on their skills. It doesn't really encourage them to work as a team because they know that it doesn't matter which bracket they get placed in, they are going to get that that cheap fake ass ring, you know, but it, it, 
you know, they can show it off to their friends. The parents can take pictures of it and say, hey, you know, my child won a, a tournament, giving off this illusion that your child won, but actually they were the best of the shitty teams. And um, I mean, like, that's just what how I call it. And some people have gotten mad, you know, at me for calling them, you know, the shitty bracket, but it's the truth. You know, it's the truth. If your team is good, if you work hard and you're beating everyone else, then if you put in the time and the effort to hone on your skill, if your team is getting thrashed like zero to 20 and you get put in a shitty bracket, so you are playing other shitty teams, I don't see that as something to brag about. I honestly don't because it, it, it loses the integrity of the game. It loses, you know, like, the the life skills of competition and working as a team you know so so like what are we actually trying to encourage these kids to do just be average just be shitty and that's what we kind of see in society is we see people putting out shitty work we see people building shitty things because they're just expecting to get rewarded with that paycheck so i'm going to pass it on to jerry i've said hell what i've had to say for now so jerry yeah, thanks for warming this discussion up, Brandon and Crip. Thanks for the intro. You did amazing. So Thank you. just to follow back up on what you said, Brandon, uh, mediocrity is the new standard. I can't disagree with that. Um, and just that's a crazy story. I mean, yes, you should show up. You should participate. And, of course, it doesn't mean everybody's going to give it their all. But it's encouraged. Like, people that are great will encourage you to do your best and that's why they're great first of all and someone mediocre will say nah just show up and that's it like just think about what i'm going to do afterwards don't focus don't pay attention don't put in any effort don't build any skills just waste my time and that's the wrong kind of mentality that's the mediocre mentality and um a good book that came to mind was mindset by carol dweck and uh and it mentions how parents reward or they tell their kids oh you're great like like you were saying brandon like if someone like if my kid were to strike out three times and i tell them like oh yeah you did good that's a lie and uh, it's just the way you know we were brought up this is the way you know generation after generation parents teach their kids that you know they get rewarded for being mediocre and uh that's something that has to change so i'll pass it to jim Thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, I mean, I can definitely say I've witnessed this with my kids in, in sports and that, and my daughter's uh, in track, and she actually, she's good, and she's got quite a few medals in that, And um, but I've seen that with the other kids that, yeah, that they all get like these uh, medals and the, the participation stuff, and so it's definitely a real thing. I've noticed it with um, also kind of the stuff with the schoolwork, like, and the kids don't learn script anymore. I, I that's kind of a an interesting thing. Like they like I, I like kids in the honor society don't even know basic math. You know, they all use calculators now. Um, but yeah, away from that, um, another thing that came to mind was like, I know like a lot of um, guys who, like over the years, um, when it comes to using tools, like used to like craftsman tools used to be like, if, if it broke, you could return it and uh, get a new one, like out, even if it was like 15 or 20 years old and shit like that. But anyway, I'm, I'm trying to talk about uh, Harbor Freight. And how there's just all these like piece of shit cheap tools now and uh like the integrity of stuff like it it's not there anymore like the quality and even though harbor freight's like logo is quality uh tools lowest prices but it's not quality it's mediocre shit but that's just kind of a a way society's gone like where the quality of products isn't there anymore and you you everyone knows that and like you could look see that in so many ways. Uh, another thing that came to mind was cars. Like 
back when I was a kid, my parents used to be able to rattle off, oh, that's a 68 Chevy or whatever model it was. And like cars were very distinctive and well built and like people were proud of them and all that. And now they're all just like, they all look the same. They're all like mediocre looking. Even like the expensive ones aren't even that cool looking, you know? Like, like a, so there's like the Porsche, like Cayenne, like these kind of SUVs. They just look like a Hyundai to me, you know? Like if they were side by side, they, stuff like that, uh, their uh, cars aren't what they used to be. It's just some that came to mind. And, uh, you could say the same thing about architecture, you know, back in the past, how they used to build these like amazing cathedrals and stuff. And over the last uh, more recent times, but you know, the architecture just isn't anywhere near that level, you know? So what happened there, you know, but all right, pass it over to Chris. Thanks, Jim. Oh man, you got you got my mind going on a lot of things. I got to go um, on a trip a few years ago where I did go get to see um, Southern France, Derek. I was loving it out there, and then um, we actually went to Paris and London. And I was looking forward to checking out the buildings because everybody told me, you know, the buildings are pretty amazing there. And sure enough, like everywhere you go, there's nothing but like stone and granite and rock like stuff is carved out you know it's like they their whole those whole cities are built like solid stone wall to wall you know what i mean and everyone if you look close there's like intricate carvings even like it's just the bank or something and there'll be like gargoyles inside of it and stuff and then you come back here in california and it's like these cracker jack houses right it's like pretty cheesy when you think about the way things have been built through different times, especially some of these ancient architecture that show up. We don't even know how the hell they built it. Um, and it's still here and we can't even make stuff last like a couple generations. It's pretty sad. And so being a carpenter, I got to say like over the years, the skill level, like you were saying, super mediocre, if not lower than mediocre and getting worse because um, what we what we keep doing in every is not just carpentry. It's not just um, building trades. This is in um, school, this is in entertainment, this is in health, um, the way we treat our bodies. There's a degradation that's been going on for qu quite some time. And the more important question is why is this happening, right? And, um, but before I get onto that why, I just wanna tell you a quick story of something I experienced recently. And you know, I think everybody else has probably experienced this too. I was um, sharing this house with my roommate. I come around the corner, um, running my errand, and I hear she's on the phone, and she's saying, operator, operator, give me customer service representative, customer service representative. So, you know, she's yelling through the phone over, over, operator, operator, you know, because you get on these stupid freaking repeating things. It's like, if you'd like to do this, push you, please <laughs> enter all your numbers again. Oh, we'd like to know. You know, and you just, you're there, you're yelling, you're just pushing zero give me a fucking person, you know? And it, it, there used to be a time in history when customer service was actually caring about the person and trying to service their needs. Now they give you an answering machine that says, we'd like to care about your needs, but we really don't, you know? Um, please push one, two, three, if you would like to hold longer and get a stick shoved up your ass, because that's what we're gonna do. And people just, are putting up with it. People are not fighting back enough to put a dent in their businesses. They have monopolies. So, I mean, and then in person, since um, since COVID, this thing has gotten like four times worse. Just the normal customer service you used to be able to expect in a store went to shit after they started telling people, are you, you're not wearing a mask? Have you put bacterial soap on your hands? Like, when, whenever that dynamic changed, the whole dynamic of customer service changed where you, because you're the customer, no longer are you honored for being customer and no longer are you the most important thing. Now, you know, that shifted the mental dynamic. And those are just, that's just one little aspect, you know. What's more important is the way it bleeds into our mental, um, you know, way of looking at the world and our systems. But, you know, I'll save that for a little later and pass it on to Derek. Bonjour, bonjour. 
Bon jour. Yeah, I appreciate everyone's points. And uh, yeah, being out here in, in France, I some it, it, walking in ancient past uh, romantic times of, yeah, like you mentioned, these master builders that you really took a lot of care and uh, artistic uh, value into those crafts. And I feel like a lot of those were also dedications to the divine feminine. You just look at the architecture, right? All those beautiful curves and voluptuous, you know, corners and, and facades and all that stuff. But even today, out here next to Marseille, and uh, people are trying to cut corners just as much as folks, uh, you know, across seas over there, which all, you know, and, and it really devaluates a lot of stuff. And there's so many things that have been watered down uh, because of things that have been so, you know, blatantly monetized, yet people don't, you know, take the time to step back and realize that holy shit you know we're spinning the wheel so fast in the rat race that you know we're raping and pillaging mother earth already and you know you diminuate that from the psychological aspect of how people have been degraded in their lifetime as well and over how many centuries even heirloom uh seeds of fruits and vegetables have been degraded you take it from, you know, 100 years ago, like what was the nutritional value of a strawberry as it is today? And how many cross hybrids and all that stuff just because of a monetary motivation. And that's just one aspect of so many other things that, you know, play on the psyche of this mundane, mediocre miasma. And I've been so flipping sick of it that, that I really just, yeah, <laughs> if y'all caught me yesterday, I, I was vitriolic and very cathartic and just like looking at a lot of fucking shit that you see slathered on the fucking internet. The, the water's been muddied up so fucking hard. Everyone's got a fucking microphone. They can say whatever the fuck they want to now because things are so cheap and there's, you know, all these other uh, platforms where everyone can say and stand on whatever fucking digital soapbox <clears throat> and gain support and have some fake ass fucking validity because they got subscribers and followers on TikTok and all this fucking bullshit that they can just, you know, keep lip servicing whatever the fuck they're running off of. And a lot of these people are running off of ostensible information and just, you know, the mediocre. All right, let's take it from the macro to the micro. Over how many centuries? What has been, you know, diminuated from good quality to you know shitty mediocre quality that was we've all been talking about just like the beauty of life that we perceive through architecture through other different you know means of expressing consciousness in in ar the arts of life and all this stuff because you know it's been subsidized to some fucking monetary motivation like i mentioned but uh um yeah like i mentioned in other videos there's you know, babies having babies and people giving birth to children off of a, uh you know not a fully developed consciousness that's fucking mediocre average whatever the fuck it's going to perpetuate the same fucking cycle generation after generation especially when we have institutions that have been manipulated the fuck over and compromised as we've mentioned in other videos we're you know, we're weaving certain tapestries into, you know, these videos that we create and these topics that we bring up, right, fellas? And so this ties into what we've mentioned before. And so it leads to a lot of mediocrity. And yeah, we, we can get into the whole, you know, some, so many people are overly sensitized and parents got to make their children feel validated in, in any any kind of fucking error that they make and all the stuff and uh, it's a disservice uh to a lot of things to a lot of levels and even in whatever truth speaking community as mark passio you know brought up in a, the recent video that brandon you shared uh, i forget the conference but um oh yeah the great reset which is where people need to be at to really fucking raise the standard of, 
human consciousness and you know the you know the the true earth timeline and you know people talking about 5d and this and that and you know make america america great again when people lack fucking greatness within themselves so we're trying to evoke you know leveling the fuck up for fucking real in this video get the fuck over this mediocre fucking bullshit and you have to really activate that shit within your heart first and fucking foremost as we mentioned in you know the one you know what is the great work was what we're trying to fucking do right so rick what's cracking man we had a great chat <laughs> <laughs> trying to like have you know above mediocre relationships within yourself yeah. and with other people right so yeah so no, I agree. Wrong, but yeah no you guys make great points and uh, and as i was saying at the beginning i started my mindset when this topic i brought it forward was at the schooling and the trophies and stuff but i quickly the more i thought about it is that over time we have all um we've all slowly got used to mediocre mediocre everything like when you think about it that's what i started to realize like and you guys make great points all you just kind of touched on it jim all is chris all is you know brandon you guys uh, all touched on it in some way that i was thinking about because we have become acclimatized i call it to this mediocrity and you can pick your poison where where it's become mediocre and i and i just was writing down a few things that i was thinking about what's in my case for healthcare, it, it was huge i remember when i was 17 years old the difference from healthcare from then to where i am now is huge compared how much worse it's gotten it's just gotten so much worse in every aspect every every area that I can, in my experience, has gotten worse. And so, and that's only one area. And then I think of all the other areas, like our food quality, as you guys were saying, mediocre, it's getting worse. Our health, mediocre. Now, you know, if, and it's just the truth, if you're overweight, you know, this is the new, this is a great thing. Like the, this is, it's not good. <laughs> I mean, that's the problem. But you have people saying like this whole positivity thing. And I think that's so dangerous when you, you know when you lie like that and i'm just being honest i know it's going to upset some people but that's just the truth you know and you know you can't go around just kind of saying that everything is great when it's not and i just think of all the things i think of the dating scene i think of all these dating apps it's just made it's made dating mediocre marriage now you know people are getting married and if it doesn't work out a year later they're divorced and they're getting married again it's become mediocre and communication i think is another one in-person communication has become mediocre and uh, tech i guess is the blame for a lot of that it's got its good points it's helping us do this but i noticed that in-person communication i notice it drastically because i like to talk to people in person and i think that's becoming mediocre so you know you name it if i think if anyone thinks about any topic you're going to see that's become mediocre or, and jim brought up with our products i was thinking of that today actually like we're so accustomed to just buying cheap products if they break in six months or a year well we'll go buy another one We'll go to the dollar store, we'll go to Walmart, buy the cheap product, and we've just become so used to just the bare minimum. So that's where my mind is at. And I sorry to ramble again, but if anyone wants to build off of that, I'm just saying pick your yeah. think about it. And pick your poison and you're gonna find it's mediocre. Um, one of the words that's synonymous with being you know, mediocre is being average. So if we take, you know, people's behaviors which are mediocre you know, for the average person, if their behaviors and actions and the output is mediocre, then obviously they're taking in mediocre, you know, information. And that's the problem with people is they don't want to push themselves. They don't want to be great. You know, they don't want to um, explore the mental capacities. You know, they want to go halfway up the mountain and stay in the comfort zone. You know, they don't want to climb to the top keep pushing themselves striving to do a uh, great you know challenge yourself that's what people don't want to do and three things that i think have led to this main problem is people becoming you know average and the social engineers being able to put out these these mind viruses you know like these forms of mediocre thinking to you know to get people to pretty much destabilize themselves and to become more weaker and to sacrifice their principles is the radio in the early 1900s because that's what the average person was you know using to take in information and that had a lot of influence and of course 
the one device that has raised more children in the Catholic Church, the television. The television influenced so many minds to just be average. You know, um, I'm sure you all can remember Jerry Springer, you know, Maury Povich, You Are Not the Father, reality TV shows. Um, you had MTV, um, all the sports, you know, all, all of that garbage, which got people to change and degrade their way of life, degrade their way of thinking, degrade their principles, degrade their morality. And then, of course, you had the original shorts, which the news was the first original media that put out shorts. Because if you can't focus, how can you be great? If you can't, you know, um, if, if you can't focus, then how can you achieve a, a goal? So if you destabilize one's ability to focus and you hit them up with so much information with a sensory overload, you know, like the news is always changing stories every minute or two. Uh, so, so if people can't focus, then you, um, you degrade their ability to actually, you know, gain clarity, to gain meaning. And all of these things are needed in order for you to be great at no matter what you do. You know, mm -hmm. to be great requires focus. You know, it requires willpower. It requires dedication. It requires courage. It requires care. But you see, if you're always, you know, jumping from topic to topic or taking in, you know, a little bit of information here and you're all over the place and you're scatterbrained, you're not going to be great. You're not going to, you know, have want to, you know, have that focus. And then now, of course, everyone's doing this. Everyone's damn near making out with their smartphones, you know, looking down. That right there has become the average thing to do. And you see a lot of mediocre people trying to use their smartphones to pretty much do everything. And I'm not saying, you know, they don't have a significance. And I'm not saying, you know, you can't take in some information. But when it actually comes to truly educating yourself, the correct way, the smartphone is not the way to do it. It's not the screen too small. You know, it like you're not going to take in all the information. You know, sometimes you may have to watch things two or three times. You need a large screen, you know, with the right amount of pixels. If you're going to research stuff, you don't want to do it on a phone. You don't want to read a book for on the phone. You don't want to watch a two hour documentary on the phone. There are better devices you know, out there that's going to make it more easier to educate yourself. And you still see people literally looking down, making love, you know, hugging their phone. It's almost like they want to assimilate with it. And we see more and more content creators, you know, putting out garbage, putting out shorts, you know, putting out TikTok videos, which they do have their purpose, but you're really not going to truly educate someone off one minute videos. You're not because everyone's looking for likes. Everyone's looking for views. Everyone's, you know, trying to get that quick fix that, you know, that that quick cash, you know, because the more likes you get, the more comments, you know, the more it gets pushed for, into, into the algorithms, then the more ad revenue that the influencer gets. So they are pushing toward the average, you know, because that's what everyone's trying to do. Like, share, subscribe. You'll never hear me say those words because I don't give a fuck if you do any of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'll pass it on to uh, to whoever wants to take it. Uh, I'll jump in there, yeah. Brandon. Oh, were you going to say something, Jim? No, you're good. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this thing's like mental physical and spiritual and um we didn't really define mediocre i think people know what it means but if you do look up the etymology it basically um comes from like media medio i, I can't remember the exact word but it means medium you know medius or um mediocris right but you know it, it's the idea of the center right and in theory like on the physical plane there's an aspect of being human that like if you're in the middle of a crowd and there's an attack, you're going to be safe. Right. If if um, you're not an extremist in your like little society, 
there there's a certain comfort in that that you're not going to be the first one to get attacked you know if if you're not the extremist whereas you're the more extreme person in society you're kind of more in danger of survival to a certain extent just because of being human so i understand the fear of being too different sticking out too much even though that's never been me i've always been willing to be kind of the far out guy i'm all mm -hmm. right with that and i think you know the more we come to know ourselves the more we become okay with what we're different and we recognize those as being our powerful allies the things about us that make us different but i am recognizing why people have a fear of sticking out from the crowd that's part of our survival instinct as humans but on the physical level becoming delicate and soft is in no way good for survival and being a, a male and uh, growing up in kind of a tough neighborhood you know bad side of neighborhood I was outside playing a lot and we when we'd fall on the um concrete we'd fall on the asphalt you'd get cut you know and so I took lumps when I was a kid we had like little crews of gangs and stuff we would call ourselves and we would like you had to climb this tree and jump over here to this one and um you know sometimes someone would fall and get all <laughs> bloodied up and you know we'd run home you know but we healed and we learned how to use our body and um like riding bikes all that shit. i think what i noticed over the years in that same um, apartment complex where i grew up less and less kids were playing outside so um over time i'm seeing like kids getting more and more delicate and soft and and like being around other males i recognize a lot of guys never had the opportunity to really get their hands dirty and to get in the mud and dig with the shovel all day feel like it what it's like to do labor for eight hours a lot of men have never even really felt that in their adult life and so what's going to happen when there's an emergency or you know the power goes out or the water goes cold you know i started getting interested in cold water immersion just for that reason i was like well what if the power stops and i have to take cold showers this is going to be pretty extreme so i started learning to take cold showers and then you know later discovering like wim hof i've learned that pushing your body a little bit is a really good thing it makes you feel good and it's actually good for your skin your skin's like an organ that needs to be stretched and people have grown so accustomed to a certain temperature everything always has to you know and whether it's a summer or the winter you go in the gas station or the store and you hear someone say oh, it's too hot you're too cold eh. or they look outside and they're afraid to go outside it's like dude this is the world we live in, you know what I mean? This is, mm -hmm. this is a place we have to be. And then not only that, like when in history have human ever reached the maximum capability of the human body? And they said like, oh, no more Olympics. You know, that's as high as we can jump. That's as far as we can spit, you know, like there's no limit to what the human body can actually do. We have never found it. And yet, like the most largest part of our population are happy to just let their body sort of degrade into a bowl of jello, you know? And so that's the physical flame. And then medicine, you know, just popping a pill sounds so much better. Look at those commercials. They're like running to go get on their canoe ride at the waterfall. And the voice is like, are you having trouble with how you shit? You know, like maybe <laughs> you need to take this pill so you could join your friends out here running on the kayak with the fucking canoe right and it's not actually what people do because most people don't do that and even if they did that was like a pretty lame ass river anyway but the truth is that people are so happy to just is there an easier solution or quicker can i just take a pill so i can get back to my you know lame ass job and you know repeat what i did yesterday and then that all all that repetition and waiting for the light and sitting at the corner and being dazed out, looking at the phones, it puts your mental state in a state of being kind of like um, submissive all the time, hitting submit on your phone, submit, submit, submit. Yes, sir. Okay, boss. Okay, cop. Okay. You know, you know we're constantly submitting all day long and then we're turning to jello. So what's happening spiritually? What is our over self being in the physical world? It's seeing this person going through these repetitive motions about things they don't really care about and taking in stimulus from entertainment of other people's lives and adventures that they haven't ever actually lived. So they live them vicariously every night through the television or yelling at your favorite sports hero that they're going to go out and do it, not you, you know? 
and and I know this isn't across the board. I do see amazing people and amazing things happening, but I'm just saying for 90% of us, we got to step it up on the mental and physical realm to even get to the place where we can think spiritually, because otherwise it's just base level consciousness trying to deal with health problems, basically, because you can't really get there if you're all you can feel is pain and frustration of your body and the need to shove more food in it to fill the void, you know, or drink more, you know, so, um, yeah, there's a lot to talk about on yep. the subject. Who's next? <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? Jerry? Derek, go ahead. Uh, folks. <laughs> uh so yeah just stemming off of what i kind of mentioned <clears throat> so people can just run through the matrix not even knowing it exists and go through their lives you know like walking the garden laid path or whatever people want to call it and yeah the American dream was not all it seems. And as George Carlin said that, yes, it is the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it or whatever, however he conceived it. <clears throat> but uh, so what, what is this natural cycle of life for people really? We're just gonna, you know, sleep eight hours, which is a third of one's life. And I'll get to that later uh go to go to school go to you know in the school system how fucking mediocre is that right you we talked about education uh just you know get the get the partnership get married you know create reproduce consume you know like the they live you know looking through the glasses whatever and uh so what is it? Why are we sleeping away a third of our lives? For me, that was one of the sparks that lit a fire up my ass and made me want to just, you know, really take hold of my life. And how many people are actually taking hold of their lives and actually trying to progress towards being more of the causal factors of their lives instead of anything exterior from, you know, out of outside of themselves? And that gets into natural life. That, that gets into not trying to be fucking governed and having all these fucking uh, draconian rules and regulations thrown up against us institutionally or, or politically and all these other things. And <clears throat> for me, I realized that, shit, I was living a pretty mediocre life. What the fuck am I doing? exactly like <laughs> i was happily married and all this stuff and i wanted to you know have kids and this and that and i was like you know i want to teach my kid all this stuff and like wait holy shit i i completely stumped myself because i realized that you know i had inklings about a good a lot a good amount of stuff and a lot of doubts about other things and you know just like if i was to lean off of the entire education that I that I had throughout the totality of my life, I would think like, geez, you know, like, what kind of life skills am I actually going to be able to, you know, transfer that knowledge to my kid outside of my own personal experience, which of course, I was going to infuse and that counts so much more for any instant institutionalized fucking bullshit. And that's not to take away some of the good nuggets of things that have helped me and anyone else that have gone through the ringers of political uh, public school systems or private or whatever right but uh people get indoctrinated into so many different other camps as well like we haven't touched on religion which we mentioned in another uh episode that we've done which can lead lead people to a mediocre fucking life because again it's another thing that is you know drawing atten attention away from oneself for uh, and having like this external influence that is superseding one's own personal fucking sovereignty and oh yeah like just wait another two thousand years because jesus gonna is gonna come and save your ass from the fucking sins you were born into and all that other whatever the fuck 
And however people want to, you know, say that, and we're not going to hear the Bible bash or whatever the fuck, but, you know, I see religion in beyond Christianity and Abrahamic and whatever the Islamic, they're like halfway hobbits on the way to true spirituality. And we'll include the new cage movement in that as well, right? Because they got, they got a lot of good stuff. They're drawing so many different good frequencies of universal laws, but they leave out some things. They lead people astray, and uh, they water down a good amount of stuff. And this is what you know, muddying the waters has done. We're inundated by so much fucking mediocre fucking bullshit, and that's what I was kind of saying about everyone having you know a stage to stand on and all this stuff. Like there's a gazillion channels for people to tune into and what are people actually paying attention to you go on to the landscapes of, of youtube or wherever what are people's fucking attention is being drawn towards what are where are the million view videos talking and leading and directing people towards exactly right so for me mediocrity and separating the greatness from the average fucking shit it's like MJ to La Flop Lames and that kind of shit. And like, and I don't know if you guys have seen like LeBron James being like put up on a fucking pedestal and this and that, but you know, this stems into this whole push in the powers that I wish they want to fucking be. They're on some mediocre shit that they themselves, ignorant mass motherfuckers, trying to circumvent natural law and shit. But uh, they're trying to put certain people on pedestals, the people's fucking champions, right? And they're twisting so many rules to, you know, do whatever. And you see people just buying into all this stuff and it leads people to, you know, like I said, Lef LeBron James, sorry if anyone doesn't follow basketball and that kind of stuff. I don't really myself, but I've kind of caught on to some of the, the rigmarole of some of the shit because, you know, I like true pure competition, but that, is more of like a you know when you're growing up as a kid it should you know people don't need to be making million dollars or whatever the fuck y'all be doing like and people paying money into that of course there's you know like the media television rights and whatever the fuck to keep the bread and circus running since the roman fucking times right god damn what the fuck did they're taking our lions and turning them into to fucking lambs we have so many incredibly gifted athletes that are getting filtered through fucking professional sports what the fuck are they doing they're, they're bypassing a proper education first and fucking foremost and they're not even like you know growing up to and like spreading the wealth in a proper way especially through the eye maga nation the true mon eye stemming from the tr first eye but anyways i that but there's other things that you know, just it's like separating the the strong from the weak, and all these other things that just people are are being you know taken away from their true core essence, and to really bring it back for people individually, that will really lead them towards the path of greatness and out of the fucking mediocre miasma that we're kind of mm -hmm. just led to believe. I mean, how many people kind of grew up? I'm going to finish with this real quick because when I was young, I, I didn't, I wasn't like this, you know, like I kind of grew up thinking a little passive and looking at all the great works of things and like, wow, like how can this thing, th these things are so amazing. Right. And like, so <laughs> think about art, music, uh, you know, Beethoven, who, the f what happened to those cats and this and that, and like trying to aspire to some true, masters of ceremony so you know i felt like i could never be that good or this and that and society kind of yeah again puts people on these pedestals to make it seem like it's so un unattainable and that goes for you know magazines where people are airbrushed and this and that you see like the the beauty and all that you know cosmopolitan and you can spread it across the fucking gambit of you know what the mainstream media and propaganda are trying to you know make people tune into whatever right and yeah there's a lot of mid-tier middle mid-carded things that are you know 
put up on oh look at this now and that kind of stuff so we kind of feel uh dwarfed by these you know grandioso things right which is a shame because you know we're not really taught or encouraged to be as large as that sometimes or for the most part so that can lead towards mediocrity but uh anyways i'm sorry if i went on too long but uh who's next Well, I can talk if if no one else wants to. But Jim, you're not in here, so I figure you got something to say. Oh, Jim, how you mute it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. I, um, I was thinking about music, definitely. How like in the '60s and '70s, and you know '50s, '60s, there was always uh like there's a whole bunch of new music and rock and roll and that and then even the 80s had some original music but ever since the 80s i don't think there's really been like the music scene has been and i'm not into like hip-hop and stuff but it's never i don't think the music has been as great as it was like the 70s was phenomenal like the amount of bands that there were that in the, the song songwriters and all that like that was like music is way more mediocre and then when derek had spoke about classical music i mean that's really amazing to think about like and what did it even take to make all those instruments the quality and craftsmanship for that and like to make a baby grand piano you know and then have 50 uh members of a band all you know perform a one piece of music is phenomenal and then you know, rock and roll, like it was only four guys with, you know, some electric instruments, but they did some incredible stuff with that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but because I don't know enough about her, but I, Taylor Swift, I, I know she's like, like one of the most decorated, like got the most awards and stuff, but like, I just wonder like, how come I don't know any of her songs? Like, but I, she's like, she's like, everyone loves her. And it's like, I, I guess she's talented, but I don't know any of her songs. I just find that strange, you know, like, um, but maybe I should listen to her, <laughs> you know, like, but I, I just find that so strange that one of the most famous musicians, and I don't even know, like, she doesn't have, like, a catchy song that if I walked into, like, a store and it was playing, I don't know it's her. I just think that's that's weird. Like, that's mediocre. But, uh, um, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I think that mediocrity is desirable for most people as long as they can get by. That's kind of what, like, they're happy to achieve that um, as long as they can make enough money and be safe and uh, even get like a, a good retirement and then maybe they'll die and then and realize oh I fucked up <laughs> I just like I didn't do what I was supposed to do but because I think I do think we are you know our souls come here for a greater purpose than to just like fall into the rat race and that but you know like I, I go into some of these office buildings from time to time, delivering for Uber, and I'm like, I don't know. Like I might sound weird, but I, I'm judgmental. But I'm just like, I can't believe that this is what people do, and I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm like, this is what they do all day, and they're like, I could never do it. Like I could never put on a suit and. <laughs> go work in an office like but so many people like around where i live you know around new york that's a big thing like office jobs and i just that i just can't like i, I go in those places and i i get such a weird feeling like i i get like spooked out like that that's reality and i just couldn't imagine being that but People, and I, I don't. I wouldn't think that they're like so happy about it themselves, but maybe they, some of them can make the best of it. But um, 
Ah, whatever. It's just that's definitely mediocre, but and, but they're okay with it. I've seen that a lot, where people are just they seem to be okay with their mediocrity. And but like you guys are saying, it's if you do try to like step out and do things that you really want to, you you get to know yourself a lot better. Um, so. That's pretty much it. So the one thing I'll just say on the other end of it, I remember growing up always drinking like mediocre beer, <laughs> like <laughs> Coors Light and Budweiser. I, I just, I drank Buds all day long. And then, and then I knew some uh, friends from England and they, they told me that this American beer was like such shit and I would like defend it. There's such such mediocre beer, but over the years, and now that I stopped drinking, but towards the end, I was drinking the good stuff. But beer did get better. <laughs> if that's, I'll give it. Uh, on that on that end, I'll just say, well, there's something that improved. <laughs> I'll pass it along. But yeah, so I, like, what is that? Oh, sorry. Eric, the beer, and sometimes I want it, like, because there's new beers. Like I was in a bar today delivering, and uh. I was just like, oh, which one would I drink, <laughs> you know? But uh, of course, I'm not. But ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the beers look good now. Yeah, but that, I don't think that does anything for um, the mass of society. You know, you know, like doing better, <laughs> lots of new good beers. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just leads to more, uh, more idle laziness. <laughs> Did you try that new non-alcoholic haziness? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jim, uh, you drink buds. We smoke buds. <laughs> exactly. But um, you uh, you brought up a good point because it's easier to blend in, you know, if you are mediocre. It's easier for you to match yourself, you know, but you don't draw any attention to you, you know, how you can think inside the uh, box. And I kind of equate being mediocre to collectivism. You know, because the cult mentality, it's like Jim said, you know, you got people who, um, you know, who get comfortable in their office job, you know, have to get comfortable doing what the average person is doing. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to be great. You know, they don't want to challenge themselves. And then another uh, another area that I see people being mediocre in is their research and their knowledge and their understanding. Hell again, people want to stay in that comfort zone. People want to just stay halfway. People just want to stay in the realm of conspiracy. People just want to think that, um, you know, it's just a it's just a federal reserve. You know, we can just put the right person in office to fix all of our problems. They don't want to go further, deeper, climb up that mountain into hell natural law, into shadow work, into learning about objective morality. And heavens forbid, you know, they learn about real, true hell, anarchy and occultism. And this is why we see, you know, a lot of people getting or a lot of these influencers just talking about the political stuff and they're getting all the views. Um, you see people talking about flat earth. You see people talking about uh, the man hell versus woman split. And you see people getting like 500,000 uh, views because they are just talking about more useless uh, hell freaking division. You still got people out there talking about you know is the government going to uh, is the government going to release this information on aliens? You know people oh, love yeah. that stuff. You know how people <laughs> eat that stuff up, but they don't want to go further to the point of hey you know maybe I should be taking responsibility. Hey maybe I should be trying to fix my own trauma. And that's the thing is is as long as you're willing to stay in that comfort zone, you'll never really change. You'll never really grow. And that's the thing is mediocre people don't want to grow. They're fine with just settling. They're fine with being the way that they are. They're fine in that mindset. Why would they need to, you know, get better? And that's the thing is, is the, the mediocre mindset is it's not my responsibility. It's someone else's because I'm not good enough. You know, we talked about creating mediocre um, uh, tools, you know. I'm not good enough to, you know, to, to create, you know, have something good. I'm not good enough to build something better. 
I'm fine the way that I am because I'm still getting reward. I'm still getting my paycheck. And that's really what I care about. So really mediocre people just care about, you know, getting that paycheck or getting you know, that reward compared to true care of getting better and learning more hell about themselves, you know, hell learning more about the hell the causal factors on why we are still held in slave. And I find it hard in 2024 that people still haven't come across hell natural law. Like you got to be even below mediocre, you know, if you're a uh, a uh, hell influencer and you haven't, you know, hell have come across the works of natural law if you haven't come across the works of objective morality i find it hard to believe that people haven't come across that because the mediocre pe um, person loves to stay ignorant and that's the thing as long as we stay ignorant we'll stay enslaved so i'll pass it on whoever wants to take it i'll build off on that man hold on just waiting on the lag all right yeah <laughs> Jeez, you guys are freaking hitting it home for me. Like, I, what I'm doing is I'm internalizing everything that's being said, and I'm putting the finger towards me because I'm that mediocre person. And I've been here for a year with you guys, but I think it's finally, like like I said, hitting home where it's like, man, I that's my mind. That was my mindset. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. That's... Mm -hmm. Your guys' responsibility. You put the fucking work in. You do the live streams. I'll just be there fucking viewing. And that's bullshit, dude. I mean, we're at fucking war. And not, like I'm at war with myself. And I'm fucking losing this fucking battle. And I got to do something about it. And it's not just say it. It's do it. And, you know, I finally realized that. And I got to fucking buckle down fucking teach objective morality under natural law because that's what the fuck the solution is and uh yeah i mean fuck that mediocre shit because mediocre breeds mediocre people greatness pe great people want to build other people up it's not the other way around so people talking shit about other people that are great they don't know what the fuck they're talking about i'll pass it to chris thanks jerry um, I like that enthusiasm. I think it's going to be a great year for you with that attitude. Go out and get them. And that's part of the thing is it takes it takes that extra attitude and push. Like imagine shooting an arrow even on your stupid video game from your stupid couch. You still have to aim higher than the target, you know, to account for the distance between you and the target. So like that's part of what we're not really encouraging and introducing for children at a young age is is this like we got to ask bigger questions we got to solve these problems not just leave them for the next generation and just accept it as it is you know whenever you bring up the problems with government or the structure of our society authoritarian society people are like yeah but what are we going to do everything's going to go to shit if we didn't have government like they're instantly fearing for the next year or two of their own personal life instead of thinking about the big picture and what about everybody else and what about what really fucking matters you know and those are the questions that weren't instilled in us when we were young when we should be learning to think about actually spirituality you know i talked about the mental and the physical problems we see in this world but the the spiritual problem is the biggest one of all it's that most people i've ever talked to think that spirituality is religion and religion is spirituality and that only belongs in christianity or buddhism or one of these typical cultural religions and and then they just sort of push it in those compartments instead of recognizing that what are we here to do what is this life for who are you why are you here you know like the biggest and hardest questions are the most very most important because if you don't build the foundation of of knowledge a principle of what is real about this then you could live your whole life just drifting from one thing to another and never making any firm decisions and being compliant and um, pushed around by whims and emotions um, losing your temper having bad relationships with people but if someone actually invests from a young age in knowing themselves and trying to understand what this world around us is why we're here it forces it one to deal with relationship problems because they become super obvious. It forces one to ask the question, 
why am I doing what I'm doing? What is the purpose behind it? You know, why am I spending 50% of my life just driving a car back and forth between a place and allowing 30 to 50% of all my energy and time going into some structure that I don't even really agree with that's probably bombing and killing children? You know, like, at what point do we ask these questions and start thinking about the impact of that on, on future humans? Because we are all interconnected. And anyone that tries to separate themselves and be like, oh, I'm just my own little self. Let me see you do that all alone in Antarctica, you know, in the woods, out in the middle of nowhere. You're nothing without your connection to other humans. And we need each other, right? And so we also need to kind of like have the ability to look look at the big picture. And that's really what all spirituality is, is looking at the bigger picture, you know, what is real outside of just the physical material outcomes of what just happened, you know, is where I think most people are living their life in in a reactionary and um, just dealing with what's in the moment physically based on what just happened and how I feel about it, but not actually understanding the structure of it and the context, which is the most important thing. So, you know, in terms of where do we go from here? we start educating ourselves and one another. And that does one great way to do that right now is through this technology, because we can reach a lot of people. So work on educating other people. And when you teach, you learn. And if you make mistakes, you re-educate. You know, you explain where you made a mistake, you use some humility and say, you know what, I was talking about this and this, turns out I wasn't the expert on that, I just learned this. Actually, people will like you better if you have that um, real human to human person and you teach something straight from your heart to someone else's heart and admit when you're wrong. You don't have to know it all to start teaching. The sooner you start teaching, the sooner you start learning. So that's mm -hmm. my advice to people, what to take away from this argument. And I'd pass it off to anyone else if you want to, you know, end with a takeaway, um, something that people can grab a hold of. I'd appreciate to hear some of those things. Cool. Well, I can add something, Chris, kind of to what everybody's saying. I'm just looking at my notes and it might tie in perfect to kind of wrap up what we were at least what we were talking about. And so what I would what I would say is that we should be demanding more of each other and ourselves. Um, you know, we have to strive to be the best. You have to strive to be in the to be the best in whatever you do and do it to your absolute best of your abilities and to work to be the best you is so important you have to do the hard work on yourself i just think that's so important and something a lot of people lack is they're not doing the work on themselves and i would also say don't settle in your life a lot of people you hear settling and i just think that that's such an i just never want to be that way i just don't ever want to be it so please don't settle in your life and you know and you know if you like i just think if you hate your mediocre job you know, you can change that. You can do the work and change that. If you're out of shape, you know, or whatever, you can start getting healthy. These are all things that you can do and you don't have to accept. And, you know, don't just be mediocre because you're you're so much greater than that. Like, I mean, it's like you guys are saying, we haven't even, we need to start striving and, and not just accepting this mediocrity. So I would end with that, that, you know, to do the work on yourself and really start striving because you're, you're, you're great. Everybody, you know, we have some great potential. So I'd end with that. Right on, Rick. And uh, yeah, Chris uh, <clears throat> and everyone else, obviously. But yeah, just the, stemming off what you said about, you know, technology and how we have so many mediums to learn all these things. And, you know, it touched on my train of thought of, you know, trying to tie in, you know, my last concluding remarks on all this stuff and how it's sad that people think that we're they're not mediocre just because you know the level of technology is so great and you know oh there's even like transhumanism people want to fall into that and there's just the tendency for people to you know lean on the easy button or just take a pill to remedy you know something hella easy like shit don't really fucking work like that in the real reality of, of things as we all know, and especially if, you know, <laughs> the Hegelian dialectics of, you know, problem, reaction, solution, 
then yeah, folks really need to take heed to that. But um, yeah, I've just noticed that the human consciousness is not parallel with the level of technology really as far as like the mainstream population goes. And there are people that have superseded the technology even, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame that people can just easily sit on their fucking ass and let AI, speak to AI be like, Hey, make this for me, write this for me, all that stuff right now. How fucking mediocre is that going to be? I saw recently just to see out of curiosity, I don't know if you've seen someone put out uh, like a almost an hour long George Carlin AI, like what would George Carlin be saying in 2024? Comedy sketch. Like it was a whole AI written type of thing with his, you know, AI voice type of thing with all the algorithms, you know, plugged in to, you know, get a, the George Carlin perspective, although it was lacking the soul, first and fucking foremost, that should be the most, you know, tell, uh, obvious thing, but in, uh, it just seemed like it's not the same in, in, I don't know where I was going with that, but, uh, just to bring it back to Jerry, what you were saying as well, man. And I feel you feel you at the same time. I've been in places where I, it, looking over my whole entire life, like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just something in a shell kind of living vicariously through things that I see through television and all this stuff. And like, who am I really? What is my fucking purpose? And people really need to find the tools to break out of that shell. And that comes from within. So uh, what do I want to say? Yeah, as far as the whole degradation of things that are so, so great and how they've kind of, you know, fallen into obscurity and mediocrity, whatever. For me, that also represents that poem, uh, Rage Against the Dying of the Light. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that, right? No? Rage, rage against the dying of the, of the light. We'll just think about, just in, internalize or, you know, think about the light, that eternal life force energy, knowledge. Imagine that dying. Imagine that being manifested and us being able to have that shit available and people are fucking squandering the opportunity and fucking, you know, creating death within them fucking selves. <clears throat> and are <clears throat> we're not going to be the light bearers and holders and hold that shit upright as we fucking should. And I see the light as, you know, pure source energy, knowledge and all that stuff and degraded down to where the fuck we're at right now. We cannot let it get past the, the current state. It's fucking absurd. The level of consciousness of the, you know, average human being. This is unacceptable. We cannot progress, you know, where we need to be on the proper Earth timeline at this fucking rate. So <clears throat> that's just my call out to people to level the fuck up. And that's it. Self-examination, shadow work, inner work, all that shit. You know, I do my own part every single time. Every work I put out in public, I try to review it when I have time and realize like, any errors and all that stuff, be humble about it, humble myself and come back more correct. And people can, you know, apply that to any form and way of life as I, yeah, I'm sure you brothers have as well, right? A lot of folks out there listening as well, you know? So yeah. Bonsoir. Sounds like you're talking about that everlasting lamp, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> real quick. I'm gonna be short. Uh, I equated medioc mediocrity to being average. So what I see the average person who claims to be awake claims to know what's going on is they're not taking action. They are not getting involved. They are not getting on the battlefield. And like Jerry said, this is a war. The war is not just you know going on within you. The schism you know within you that you have to 
win, but the the award is spilling over into, you know, health and physical world, you know, health and mind control and all the things that we are under uh, attack on. <clears throat> you could just be yourself, you know, you don't have to be great right then and there, but you can strive to be great. But if you stay average, stay, stay in the realm of comfort, stay being a coward, staying on the sidelines cheerleading, you're going to do more harm than good. And the truth can use more voices. We can use more voices. The great work can use more voices and jump on the battlefield and just do it because it's the right thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. So I'll close on that. It's a good ending. Um, I think I got everybody muted. If you want to say something, let me know. Any last words? Jim? Who's interested? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, if there's anyone out there who's interested in becoming more and more mediocre, then you can follow the work of, there's a, a famous philosopher called Mediocrities. And uh, you can check him out. That's about it. <laughs> Thou shalt not be lazy. Thou shalt get off thy ass and get some great work done. Thanks, folks, for checking out the One Great Work Warriors. And um, we're going to have a live roundtable on the following week after this is played. So next Thursday. And we're going to talk about the same topic um, live. So everybody's welcome to come join. That's always an opportunity to get out there and start doing this great work yourself is to come on to my show or come on to someone else's show and um, give it a shot, you know? And um, the sooner you do that, the sooner you can start doing your own thing and um, or joining up with other people. So there's your um, olive branch and here's your um, ticket to a better world. You got to choose. You got to make the choice, make the sacrifice and do the hard work. Thanks for joining us, folks. I'm in pain, I'm in a prison, I'm in a mental prison, and a physical one at that, and definitely a spiritual one, whether that's recognized at a conscious level or not. As I wait for my sleep, this situation's got me thinking, do you want to hurt the sink? And all life is an extinction, evil creeps in your dreams, secret teams throwing me in the building. In between my control for the teens, now they got you on your knees. I'm making my way through this open maze, but I'm dazed by mass confusion. All the images that they're using. There's the rest race to the tip of the top of the pyramid. The Falling in, you know, to this low level of spiritual awareness, such that these methods can have any effect over us. Hello, this is 